Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this flea market mix Christmas stocking. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. The focal point of the stocking is this Victorian calling card print where I have rubber stamped a name or a sentiment in the, uh, in the center. And I'll show you how I've done that. I'm using this kind of uh, clear acrylic stamps where you literally peel off the letters and stick them onto an acrylic block. I'm wearing gloves because it's so messy. So anyway, you peel these letters off and you put them down on the acrylic block. I have this one has my daughter's name, Caitlin, and this one just says Joy. And I did some that say Violet, my granddaughter. And you just sort of ink it up. I like it to be a little bit um, wonky. You know, I always think, well, if it's not wonky, then you could just print it, right? Here's the fabric. Actually, I think I'm going to do the Joy. When you stick the letters onto the acrylic block, they go backwards. So J-O-Y so that when you turn it over, it's right side up. Some of these are smaller than others and won't be able to accommodate a long word, but for a little short word like joy, there we go, nothing to it. Anyway, you can prepare as many of those as you like and you can put any sort of sentiment or word or if you use smaller um, rubber stamps, you can always put Merry Christmas or something like that. But it's easy and it's fun and I've prepped a few of these so we can get started. The calling card images are each four and a half inches wide. So I've drafted this pattern to be four and three quarters. I wanted to have a little bit of a seam allowance but not too much so that we could easily come right into the edges. I'm gonna use this one. None of the calling card images is particularly Christmas. I have cut a piece of 50 weight Pellon non-fusible interfacing, and this is gonna be the foundation of the stocking. Oh, I have two. These, the um, calling card image could be the cuff, which would be nice, I might do that. We'll put this at the cuff, and then we're going to foundation piece the rest of the stocking front with the Darling Flea Market fabrics. In order to make this project a little more Christmassy, I'm going to add a little bit of this tinsel rickrack. It's white with a gold metallic thread in it. I think I'm going to cut this below the third row of buttons. But remember, I do have a seam allowance to account for. So once I add my next fabric, I think I'll add this one. Um, it's going to be a little bit shorter, of course. This one is two little birds in a nest. It's really cute. Let's see. I don't want to cut off the birds. I think I'll arrange it so that it's about like this, so you can see the birds. And then match it up, stitch it, and fold it down and press it. Now I'm going to add a machine embroidery stitch, maybe a little um, feather stitch along here. I'm sure your machine has all kinds of fun embroidery stitches, so just choose some of your favorites and have them in mind for the rest of the project. There's a little feather stitch here that I just worked on my machine. Also, I'm not concerned about this not completely covering the foundation because I know that my next piece is going to go on the diagonal like this. I think before I go on, I'm going to trim this away so I can really see the shape of the stocking. I think about like this. This is sort of the angle that I like. I want to be sure that this isn't right in the center. I want it off center, about like that. I think that'll work. So 
So I'm going to pin and stitch, flip and press, and I'll be back. Now I'm going to add um, a, another machine embroidery stitch along this edge, and I'm gonna make a heavier stitch just to give it a little bit of weight. That looks good. I'm gonna trim this again so I can see where I'm going. And I'm also gonna use a straight edge and a pencil to sort of work out the angles. I wanna have another angle like this. I like to leave a quarter of an inch here to make sure that there's enough of a seam allowance so they don't all overlap on top of one another. And I don't wanna make it too big. I want to make it, uh, you know, kind of around the same size as this one. So I think this will be good, about like this. And then I'm going to cut it on the line or just right next to the line. Either one is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to use this fabric next. I'm gonna do it like this. Sometimes these flowers, they look like, you know, depending on the way that the shadows fall, that, you know, they seem like they should go one way or another. And I kind of like it this way. I also like that the weight of the design is more toward the heel and um, that way it won't be cut off. I think this will be good. So I'm going to match this up, stitch, flip, press, and I'm going to go ahead and do the machine embroidery as well. I did the embroidery mostly on the darker fabric so that it would show. And now I'm going to use a white pencil, a chalk pencil, I'm leaving a quarter of an inch here, creating a diagonal line. And I'm going to cut that off. And now I have to decide what I'm going to use for my next fabric. Next, I'm going to use this bird nest fabric again. And just so you know where we're going, this piece is going to be trimmed like this. So the fat under the triangle will be up here at the top. So I will stitch, flip, press, add some machine embroidery, and I'll be back. I'm going to trim this in the opposite direction with the narrow end at the bottom and the wider end at the top. And let's see how close we are to finishing. Now, here's something fun. For the toe, we can sort of fussy cut an image from here. Like we could put the house down there, or maybe this one with the hand, or a typewriter, or kitty cats. What about the kitty cats? They would fit. Let's do those. Would that, would that be cute? I think that'd be cute. Hmm, what do you think? It fits, here I'll show you, it does fit, and it's cute, but I don't think that I like the way that it's divided. Let's see if we can do better. I have a few options. This calligraphy alphabet will work. This kind of works, but there's just a lot of white space around it. The map over here, the map will work but I think I'm just gonna go for this little calligraphy alphabet piece because I like this color. I feel like it's gonna work, work well with the rest of the project. I hate to cut the peas apart, but we have more peas, so it's okay. I think this'll work, and by the way, I don't know, I think this is really fun, just figuring out which fabric to use where, and, um, trying different things. I still like that. I decided to go with the calligraphy alphabet. It was a better fit for the shape and the size that I needed. It just fit better this way. Um, now I'm going to trim and stitch all the way around the edge. There's my stocking. 
but I'm still kind of intrigued by these kitty cats. So I think I'm going to just sort of um, cut them out like this here. Cut them out and stick them onto the project one way or another. That looks right, about like that. This is really cute. I'm going to add this one, he's looking in. So I'm gonna put him back here near the heel and this guy's gonna go right in the center. Just a little bit of glue to hold it down. And then this one. Don't wanna get it near the seam allowance. About like that. And then I'm going to zigzag around these circles. Now it's, it's hard to be super precise with a zigzag when you're stitching in such a tight circle, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. It's going to be like a sloppy zigzag, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> Those cats turned out really cute. If you wanna do the exact same thing with your um, the cat part of the fabric, let's see which. It was the one and a half inch circle for the cats. My stocking front is complete. The stocking back, I cut the stocking back and I made sure that the toe is pointed to the left. So that will work. And then I have two lining pieces. So I'm going to do right sides together. I'm going to pin the front to one lining piece and the back to the other lining piece. And then I'll stitch across the top of each of these, just straight across the top. Now I'm opening these up and I'm going to pin. Now I'm a pinner, I do have those little clips, but I just never got the hang of them. So press the seam allowance toward the uh, front and the back of the stocking and match up those seams. Then pin all the way around the stocking and leaving an opening right here in the bottom of the foot of the lining. There we go. Now I'll stitch all the way around and I'll back stitch at the beginning and the end here and leave this open. Stitched around the outside. It's a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm still gonna trim it a little bit and I'm going to clip into these inner curves. I love these Kai scissors because they're sharp all the way to the very tip. And I can just make these tiny little clips into that rounded, that inner curve. That looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it right side out. That looks good. I'm going to fold in this seam allowance, pin it and top stitch it to close it up. It's gonna be way down in the bottom here. No one will ever see it, so I don't have to be super neat. Now I'm turning the lining to the inside and I'll press it flat and we're almost done. If you'd like for your letters to be completely solid, you can take a permanent black marker like a little baby Sharpie and kind of fill in those lines if you want it to be completely solid. I like it to be a little light and dark, light and dark so that you know you can see that somebody handmade it. Now we're going to add a, a hanging loop with ribbon. This is 1 16th inch um, off-white satin, and I'm just going to stitch it through just behind the side seam. That'll be enough. And 
then I'm going to add a bow. This is about a yard of ribbon for the bow. I actually have my hot glue gun over here, so I'm going to add a smudge of glue right here. And then um, kind of press the loops together so that my bow will be secure and it won't come untied. That looks good. Oh, I could have had longer streamers but I think that's gonna be fine. Before I say we're done, I'm going to describe the pattern. I cut the pattern from a standard piece of graph paper. The top is four and three quarters. The height from top to bottom is 10. So it's about five by 10 total. Then this comes straight down for about seven inches and then it curves over to the side. This comes down about five inches before it starts curving out to the toe. The total width over here is hmm, about, you need about six and a half inches of width and I think that's about all you have to know. You can do it. It's not that big of a deal. This part is about four and three eighths. I hope that's enough to uh, give you the confidence. You can see I just took my pen and went and when I cut it out with my scissors is when I kind of smoothed it out. Here it is from the back without all of those markings. When I'm looking at it now, I think I could have even maybe done a little bit um, softer curve right here. I think that if I would have done this, it would have been fine or maybe even better. And remember the seam allowance is included. So you can do this. Just be sure that the width of the cuff is wide enough to accommodate the calling card patch from our fabric, which is four and a half across. So four and three quarters is about the right width. I don't wanna make it four and a half because by the time I take the seam allowance, it's gonna be only four inches across, which I don't think is wide enough to really showcase that patch. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.